A newscast is, of course, made up of many different elements, live reports, special reports, tape stories, and more. Those responsible for keeping it all together are, of course, the people who anchor. This evening, we go behind the scenes for a look at an anchor man, a look at one of the best. Good evening, I'm Roger Grimsby, here now the news. Good to most evening, of us, Roger, Roger Grimsby, Grimsby seems almost like a member of the evening, family, Grimsby, paying a visit to our homes each Good night, evening, keeping Grimsby, us informed for more than a decade. Brooklyn, to those of us in and around New York, the face of Roger Grimsby is one of the most familiar on TV. But what many of us don't know is that Roger Grimsby is also known to millions of other people all across the country, people who know him only by his voice. Here's the latest from ABC News, Roger Grimsby reporting. Yes, Roger Grimsby on the radio. It's one of the best kept secrets in broadcast. Roger Grimsby begins his day two blocks away from his anchor desk here at ABC Network Radio, doing much the same thing he did when he began in 1953. weekday at 1.30 in the afternoon, Roger Grimsby begins his day sifting through wire copy, choosing the stories for his radio newscast. What stories do you choose? Ones that interest me and I think will interest the public, or those stories that I think the public should know about, whether they're interesting or not. It's a radio newsroom with some of the best in the business, and among them, Grimsby clearly holds his own. In all the discussion of television anchor people, you come down to the, uh, the plastic people, the Q ratings, the how are these people perceived by the public. Everybody tends to forget one thing about Roger, and that's the fact that he is one hell of a newsman. After writing the stories, he goes over them with his editor. I'll get a pronouncer for you if you want. Why are you using it? Just describe it. Okay. At 327, the newscast is ready to go on the air. This is an update from ABC News, Roger Grimsby reporting. A study but why does he do it? One of the top TV anchormen at the top station in the top market when he probably doesn't need the money? Why does he do radio? For me, radio is an imposed discipline. I must be here, I have to write it myself, I have to read it myself. And when I go over to television, I'm well read into the day, nationally and internationally. To most of us, Roger Grimsby is a very big name, but here, he's just a well-respected newsman. In radio, writing is everything. You're not dependent on pictures, or you don't defer to pictures. You don't have any pictures. And so you must be able to write, and that is a great satisfaction. You pride yourself on your writing. Yes. See you around. Roger is an accomplished newsman. He knows what he's reading. He knows what he's writing. He is somebody who has done it all. And through it all, I have to tell you, he's an essentially shy man. He is a very shy man. Maybe bashful, certainly not shy. He arrives in the eyewitness newsroom around 3.45. Checks with the copy editor on the top local stories. Mr. Tucker, for you. And then goes off to write on his own. My contribution in television is basically what I've done in radio earlier in the day and my contribution is uh, to try to write differently from other people to sometimes have a cavalier attitude towards other things that people hold sacrosanct i'm reluctant to uh, pontificate on television because particularly in a market like new york you better know that there are a number of people potentially in your audience who know more about the subject than you do and that's always in the back of my mind while Grimsby maintains that the TV newscast is mostly run by producers, Roger Grimsby still has a lot to say. I'll, I'll give you a bunch of surprises. Okay, can you keep it tight, please? Always tight. You really do have a lot of uh, authority in the newsroom. No, I don't actually. I don't. You watched me here. Don't ask me that question. I'm not very pushy. You can be though. Uh, sometimes I. If there's a story you feel strongly about, you say we're going to air this. That's right. You've killed stories uh, that the producer thinks are a great idea. That's true, too. You've dumped them. That's, uh, that's more often the case than putting something in. And then, just before 6 o'clock, he sits down with Bill Butel, just as they've done each weekday night for years. Grimsby and I have been together. I've, I've been together with Grimsby longer than most women have been together with Grimsby. Three. Go 7 Tonight we begin with a cocaine war in Queens, a double murder. In this day when most TV is pre-taped, the news broadcast is something unique. It's live, and because of that, there are occasional mistakes. Josh Howell reports tonight the shakeup is an understatement. It didn't roll. <laughs> it didn't roll. That is understood. Right, if something goes wrong, I'm inclined to underline it 
where other people would try to cover up and look like a fool because everybody in the audience knows that something went wrong and you pretend it didn't. So I'm inclined to underline it. News is what he's done as long as most of us can remember. And the spark is still there because he likes what he's doing. There is a certain amount of ego massage attending it, uh, having a high profile position and that sort of thing. I also think it does uh, serve a public service when it's good. And when television news is good, there's nothing better. And when TV news is good, much of the credit goes to the person who sits in the control room executing all the various elements of the newscast. Tomorrow, a look behind the scenes at the director.